Look, I don't want to seem to be picking on atheists, but I have to show that atheists make the same mistake as the Christians they accuse. And if you're an atheist, I'm not trying to dissuade you from being one. What I'm trying to do is encourage you to not be, um, how do you want to call it, irrational. I'm trying to encourage you to do your homework before you make any claims, especially if you're making claims about the Bible. And I'm trying to encourage you as an atheist to think through the issues because there are a lot of believers like me out there. And frankly, we just turn you guys off because you don't make arguments that are rational. And I presume that you don't like that. So here I'm trying to show why we turn away from atheists who prove to be non-thinkers or liars or incompetent or any combination of the three. In this particular case, there's a really neat channel called Truth Debate which really just focuses on issues. He just tries to give you information. He's not, he's making a case, but he's not particularly trying to make you agree with him. He's just trying to present the information. Okay, this particular video is called Answering the Religion of Atheism B. Um, the Religion of Atheism A cannot be viewed in the United States. There's some copyright problem with it. So B is where I started. And in this video, by Truth Debate, link will be in the video description, the guy is basically explaining, hi, atheism is indeed a religion. It's based on a faith. It's based on a faith that there is an explanation for how the universe got here without there being a God, even though there's no proof. And there is no proof. An atheist cannot disprove that God exists. Okay? An atheist is taking on faith that there is an explanation, a non-God explanation, for how the universe got here. And unfortunately, to a thinking Christian like me, when I hear the atheists talk about evolution, they don't even understand evolution. And they certainly don't know what the Bible says about it, because if they did, they wouldn't talk the way they do. And I did my atheist scam videos to explain that problem. Okay? But here, the issue is, this guy is just talking about how, yeah, everybody's got faith. Okay? You have to believe it's a good idea to get up in the morning in order to get up in the morning. That's faith. You have faith that it's a good idea. You have faith that the sun will shine. When you get in your car and you drive somewhere, you have faith that your car is going to work. Faith is simply a belief in something or someone. That's all it means. That's all it's ever meant. Okay? So the atheists, of course, have to go and come and attack this guy. And this is Noam Fro's response. I'm going to give you a link to the comment section so you can look it up and read it yourself. All right? And, you know, this is something I want you guys to pay attention to if you're an atheist. Atheists have this fixation on, how do you want to call it? Just bad-mouthing. If a Christian makes a video, it must be that the Christian's trying to sell you on Christianity, and therefore you got a bad mouth. Why are you guys so threatened? It's our job to explain. It is not our job to convince you that God exists, and it's not our job to convince you that you should listen to us. We're just supposed to explain, and whatever God does with that, fine. But you guys get real belligerent all the time, and you make your bare-chested videos with all the F words you can stick in the comment or in the video, and you look like adolescents, frankly. You really do. You're very childish the way you present your animosity toward Christianity, which you don't even understand, nor do you actually understand scripture. And that's what I wanted to make a point of in this video. Okay? This guy is is complaining about the, the definition of faith which is that hi you have to believe a thing is good in order to even do it you have to believe your car works in order to get in the car and and drive it it's just a basic way that your brain operates okay you have to have faith to lift up a spoon 
with your mouth. You're, you're believing that your hand is actually going to be able to lift the spoon up to your mouth. You don't even give it a second thought. That's faith. Because you're believing in something that hasn't yet happened, and you're believing that it's going to happen the way you expect it to. That is the classic definition of faith. That is what it means. That's how your brain lives. It has nothing to do with religion. Okay? So, this guy is taking issue with it, and I replied to him. The speaker is right. Okay? And, and this guy here has been saying that faith is absent arguments. All right? And that it has nothing in common with unevidenced or irrational religious faith. Well, that's his presumption that it's unevidenced and irrational. To him, it's unevidenced and irrational. But nobody believes in anything without evidence. Okay? Your arm worked before so you can lift up the spoon. So you believe it's going to work the next time. So I became a Christian because I got evidence of God. The fact that you think you don't have it, well, that's your business. But you can't fault what I know based on what you know. You'd have to know what I know to understand why what I know is true. And since you don't, your lack of faith in what I know, because you don't know what I know, well, that's your problem. All right? So what I tried to do is I tried to, to correct the guy based on what faith actually means in the Bible since his jumping off point is religious faith. He equates the Bible with religion. He does not equate it with religion. God is not religion. But he doesn't know any better. All right, so I have to get to the, the topic of, well, okay, fine. You want to treat it that way because when you're arguing with somebody, you take their point of departure and you build on it. Okay, the contract, faith means a contract provision in Greek. It's a commercial term. It means content of a contract. That's the, the origin of it, okay? And, and then this is the citation in the, the lexicon where you can find it. This is irrespective of religion. This is in Greek, the language. Irrespective of religion, irrespective of the Bible. But the Bible uses the Greek word pistis, and it's using it in the Greek sense, because it's a Greek word. It's not using it in this guy's sense. In Greek, this idea that the guy has highlighted here in blue, that's not in the Greek of the Bible at all. Nowhere. So that's why I'm countering him with this. Okay, so therefore you have faith in the contract. Okay, it's a justifying reason preceding faith. Your justifying reason for lifting up a spoon to your mouth is that you were able to do it before, so you're sure you can do it again. That was a justifying reason, and then your faith takes, as it were, a leap into the unknown about whether you can do it again. All right? It's the same thing. But here, it's talking about a contract. That's the word faith in the Bible. It is not what this guy is coming up with by his own invention. If you're going to dispute with the Bible, if you're going to dispute with Christianity, then you have to use the Bible's own terms. And that's what it means right there in the Bible. Okay? So that was my answer. Now, the focus of my video is this guy. Do not emulate this guy. Okay? He's an atheist too. All right? He's saying that theists are therefore confused, misread, or outright lying. The Bible's a contract. That doesn't make us confused, misled, or outright lying. It's a contract. You believe it or you don't. So right now, he's proven himself to be un incapable of reading a comment and incapable of thinking. And there he says, the speaker is not correct since faith used in theology, theology. Faith used in theology has nothing, is not the topic of the video, and it wasn't the topic that I used here. It was the word in Greek, which happens to be in the Bible. So he's changing it to theology. Well, theology can be anything. So you see, this atheist can't think through a paper bag because he's coming up with something that has nothing to do with the video and nothing to do with the comment. 
this guy too has nothing to do with the video. These guys are inserting their own ideas that if the word faith is used, it must be irrational. That's not the definition of the word in any language ever in the history of man. Okay, and the classical meaning of it is right here in Greek. It's a commercial word. It's not a religious term. It's a commercial term. It's used in the Bible. It has nothing to do with theology, and it has nothing to do with this guy saying it's unevidence. It has nothing to do with theology. Theology can be whatever it wants. So now he's saying to me that, oh, I do myself no favors by bringing up the Greek. The Greek is a commercial word. It happens to be in the Bible, and the Bible is using it in the Greek sense because it's written in Greek. So this guy proves himself to be completely incompetent at reading my comment. All right? So then I reply just what I said to you in the video now. The meaning of the word is what it is. It's not a religious term that this guy, caffeine, totally missed the point that the speaker made, which was about faith in getting up in the morning, faith that the sun is there, faith that when you get into a plane, it will actually take off and land where you intend to go, and missed the point of the commercial provenance of pistis, which is used in the Bible. Has nothing to do with theology. See, this is what atheists do, and this is what King James onlyists do. They insert their ideas and then claim those are the ideas of some other speaker. No, this speaker is talking about a commercial term in the Bible with a citation where that can be read. This guy talks about theology. That's not what I said. He's bringing up something that's irrelevant. This is what atheists do. Not all atheists. Like I said, only the stupid ones. All right, don't do this. Pay attention to what the, what the video says. Pay attention to what the comment is, because if you come up with something else, like theology, which was not even talked about, or unevidenced irrational religious faith, which is their, his prejudicial view of faith, not the definition of the word in language. You come up with some irrelevancy like that, you prove yourself to be a non-thinker, you prove to be irrational, you prove to be biased and prejudiced, and nobody should listen to your opinion. Because you don't even read or think about what was said. Okay? The King James onlyists are like this all the time. Okay? So he totally missed the point. Caffeine totally missed the point. Because he's talking about theology. He's not talking about the language. It is a word, faith. Faith is a word in the English language. It has a meaning that derives from the Greek language because the English language is based on, its provenance is based on, the Greek and Hebrew of Scripture. You can trace many English words are coming from the Greek and Hebrew of Scripture. Therefore, the Greek of Scripture is totally relevant. And the concept of faith has nothing to do with religion. It's about how your brain works. But see, these guys have to twist it. Because to them, they have redefined faith in their private minds to mean something bad and irrational. And now they're trying to impose their private definition on the language when the language doesn't have that definition. So this guy is completely, utterly incompetent and proved himself to be a jerk right there in the blue. All right, I tried to be nice about it. I tried to restate the point. It is a commercial word. Okay? And the fact that he ignored the point means he cannot or will not discern. This is a trick that atheists and King James only us all use. They twist what you say to mean what they want it to mean. Don't do this. You don't have to excuse your atheism. But you make atheism look bad if you talk like this guy does, by twisting words. Okay? So I tried to argue with him. Now look at this. Words have several definitions, and these are not set in stone. That has nothing to do with the documented commercial providence of Pistis. Okay? 
And Truth Debate finally jumps in and says, you know what, it doesn't matter what the multitude of theists say. The fact is everybody has faith. Yes, you have to believe it's a good idea in order to get up in the morning. You have to believe it's a good idea to brush your teeth in order to brush your teeth. It's a fundamental mechanism by which your brain works. It's the decision matrix. That's all faith is. Okay? Now, this is where caffeine proves himself to be a liar, an incompetent person, and and even worse, um, even worse than I thought, because because now he's responding to truth debate, and faith by that definition cannot be used as evidence for God. Nobody is claiming that faith is evidence for God. See, he's introducing an idea that doesn't exist. Faith cannot be used as evidence for God. Nobody claimed it did. Faith is based on other evidence. You believe because you have evidence. Because my arm worked the first time I lifted up the spoon, I'm lifting up my spoon, my arm again. So see, he's twisting the words again. Now watch this. This is the key proof that this guy is an incompetent liar. So now what he does to prove his point, faith by that definition cannot be used as evidence for God. Now he quotes the most mistranslated verse in all Bibles, Hebrews 11.1. 1. He says, this faith is not the substance of faith of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. This guy is using his faith in a translation to allegedly prove his point that faith is not evidence for God. And boy, oh boy, I caught him on that. Because this translation here that he's using is a very common translation. And it's wrong. The Bible does not say that in Greek. But see, he needs it to say that in English in order to prove his point. See, faith can't be used as evidence for God. So he thinks Hebrews 11.1, 1, using the English means that faith is the evidence of things unseen. He thinks that's what it means in English. Okay? So, I rebut him. You needed faith that your post would be valid to even type it. Right. If I'm typing something, I'm believing in what I'm typing, or I wouldn't be typing it. Okay? That is what faith means in any language, and you live on it every second. Hopefully you get that point by now. That was the point of Truth Debates video. Okay? And now I want to prove the point. Proof that he's living on faith. He's living on the faith that this is a correct translation in English of the Greek. Proof. You used a translation of Hebrews 11.1 1 by mistaken faith, not scientific ex ex investigation. In other words, he just flat started quoting from Hebrews 11.1 1 in the English. He had faith. <coughs> he had faith that what he was quoting was correct. So, the proof that he's using faith is that he's using it in the English. And then I tell him that the Greek is different. The Greek of the Bible should be translated as follows. It's about confidence in word, Christ thinking on trial, evidence unseen. Because the verse is metered, hence the translation should match. And I documented this already in my Hebrews 11 playlist. I gave him the place where I documented the correct translation versus his faith that this was the correct translation. So he's proving the point the truth debate makes. An atheist is proving a Christian video right by his post. Now you'd think that the guy would have at least put his tail between his legs or he would have at least checked out the Hebrews 11 playlist. Notice this was an hour ago that I made my post. Okay? So his reply comes not 11 minutes later, 47 minutes ago. 47 minutes. That means 11 minutes elapsed between my post with the corrected translation from the Greek. 
the Greek reads, Estin epistis epizomenon, hupostis is pragmaton, elechos oblepomenon. That's the Greek of, of Hebrews 11.1. 1. I've made many videos on it. I told him where to look. Right? Did he spend, it would have taken him a half hour or more, did he spend the time looking it up to realize that, yes, I am using faith in an English translation. I didn't check the Greek. So then he's not being scientific. He's not using reason. Okay? You, you, you get this, because this is the killer. This is the, the climax of the video. Eleven minutes elapsed between my post here and his post here. Look what he says. I'm a professional translator. Word by word transcription creates bad text and skewed understanding. I also happen to be Greek. Oh, dear God. I happen to be Greek. He's Greek. He's saying he's a native Greek speaker. You get that. And I can read the original. I use the KJV because I was talking in English. Okay? Your translation is horrible and mistaken in interpretation. He doesn't know what my translation is because he didn't look up the Greek. You couldn't have looked it up in 11 minutes. He's lying. Okay? And actually, I proved why the translation is correct. It's metered Greek. He doesn't know what, why this is correct. And I just read you, I just spouted off the Greek so you can check it yourself. He doesn't know, for example, that hupostasis pragmaton, okay, is a nickname for Christ in the book of Hebrews. Okay? He doesn't know that. You see the point? He doesn't know that it's an anaphoric tic-tac-toe construction in the Greek. So if he's Greek, and if he can read the original, he didn't do that because there's only 11 minutes between here and here. So he's got to cover that up. And so it just says, well, your translation is horrible. It would have taken him a half hour to even look at the playlist. Okay? And modern Greek is very different from ancient Greek, by the way. I can read the original. Oh, yeah? Then here's the next place where he proves himself a liar. I use the KJV because I was talking in English. The King James translation is, is bad, is off, is wrong. Okay? It's just flat wrong. And I prove why in my playlist, which would have taken him a half hour to read. Okay? And even if that were true, that there was a problem with my translation, why would he use the King James? The King James translation is wrong. Okay? It's just flat wrong. And he didn't even know the meaning of, of the, the, you know, pistis in the commercial sense. He didn't even understand that. So if he's Greek, then he doesn't, he doesn't know ancient Greek for sure. Okay? So if he's a professional translator, he's not doing his job. The first thing he should have done is he should have looked it up in Greek, not in the King James. Okay? So this is how I ended it. Then you are more to blame than I had stated, for if you could read the Greek, and if you're a professional translation, you should never take the translation on faith. That's the first thing a translator is taught. Okay? You don't just accept a translation. Like, I almost went to work at the UN as a translator. And one of the first things that they teach you is, you know, when you're translating, you're translating on the fly, don't take the, 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 in the, in the, United, in the United Nations, okay, the speaker is going to speak in his own language, and he, before he even speaks, he puts out in translation his speech to the other members of the UN. But they don't trust that translation. Instead, there are translators in little booths around the UN, you know, the UN main hall you know, where they, they all meet, there are translators who are translating what the speaker actually says on the fly. 
They're not going to take the transcript on faith. They want the translators to translate the words as the words are coming out of the speaker's mouths. It's one reason why the UN is so expensive. Okay? So if this guy is a professional translator, the first rule he should know is that some canned translation he should never take on faith. But he did. You see? He's taking it on faith. So he is proving truth debate right a second time, and he's proving himself to be a liar or incompetent or both because he didn't even bother to do his homework. There's only an 11 minute elapse between what I said and what he says. And if he could read the Greek of, of the New Testament in Hebrews 11, 1, he shouldn't have used the King James because it's wrong. Okay? Period. So if he's a professional translator, I said, shame on you. Someone should fire you from your job. Hebrews 11, 1 is mistranslated in every single Bible. And for over 400 years, the King James is famous for mistranslations. See, he's taking a famously mistranslated book. That's why we have so many English versions. The King James Version has so many translation errors. Everybody's been trying to, to fix it ever since. Okay, it's like Windows. Windows has a lot of bugs. So, you know, Microsoft keeps issuing patches. The King James translators kept on correcting their translations. And then after they all died out, everybody else was coming up with new English translations because there's so many translation errors in the King James. All right? So, how come a professional translator does not know that the King James is one of the most mistranslated Bibles around? A, because it didn't have the right manuscripts when it was being, you know, compiled. B, because the translators were in a hurry. And C, the translators themselves said in the preamble to the 1611 KJV that there are a lot of errors in it and that they were going to keep on working on it. And if you don't believe that, see my King James uh, KJV OB playlist, the first five videos talk about the 1611 preamble that the King James translators wrote. So how come this so-called professional translator didn't know that? So, I'm sorry, he's either a liar or totally incompetent. Do not emulate this person. If you're a Christian, do not pretend to what you don't know and do your homework. See, 11 minutes gives him away. 11 minutes. He didn't check anything. But he's pretending he knows. But he cites a mistranslated Bible with a mistranslated verse. If he could read the Greek, why didn't he just translate it himself? Okay? In English. If he's a professional translator. So he's either not a professional translator, therefore a liar, or he's incompetent at his job. Do not emulate this guy caffeine if you're an atheist. If you're a Christian, do not emulate him because the King James only is talk just like this guy does. And they use the King James and claim that it's correct. Yeah, he has faith in it too. If he's a professional translator and is Greek, he shouldn't have any faith in it. He should be reading it in the original Greek if he reads it at all. Do not emulate these people. I'm not against him for being an atheist. I'm against him for being an incompetent liar.